Hello and welcome to the Orthodox View, where we discuss the latest religious news from an Orthodox Christian perspective. I am its host, Philip Champion. Divide and rule. There is an opinion in the US that in order to weaken the Russian Orthodox Church, it should be dismembered. This view was expressed by the chairman of the Moscow Patriarchate's Department for External Church Relations, Metropolitan Hilarion of Volokolamsk. I quote, The stake is made on dividing people, on deepening the conflict. We can see it in the Middle East and we see it in Ukraine. The Russian Orthodox Church is a power that is called by its very nature to consolidate and unite people, including those who live in various countries. This church is seen as a geopolitical opponent for the United States, whether we like it or not. As a matter of fact, it is precisely this order to dismember the Russian church that was executed by Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople when he invaded Ukraine. He has carried out this order to the fullest. Today the Ukrainian society is divided not only on the grounds of language, not only on the grounds of political orientation, but also on religious grounds. Metropolitan Hilarion stressed that the church will continue to fulfill its mission to remind people of love, faith and the impossibility to build a lasting civil peace based on division. The largest in words. The head of the Ukrainian schismatics, Epifany Domenko, met with the US congressmen who are now visiting Ukraine. One of the topics of the meeting was the reforms carried out in Ukraine today. Domenko assured the Americans that the OCU was the largest church in Ukraine and thanked them for their consistent support of his country. I quote, As the largest one among the religious organizations in Ukraine, we feel our special responsibility before the Ukrainian society for promoting the building of a better state. End of quote. Demonstrating an extraordinary wishful thinking, Epifani forgot to mention that according to the data, it is the canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church that remains the largest religious organization in the country. Everlasting Gratitude A monument to Alexander Nevsky has been unveiled in Russia. The ceremony was attended by the Russian President Vladimir Putin and Patriarch Kirill of Moscow and All Russia, who both spoke at the event. The President said, Our people's sincere and profound love for Alexander Nevsky is handed down from generation to generation. He is honored as a ruler who cared for the motherland with all his heart, and as a gifted military commander, and a diplomat, and certainly as a guardian of the traditions of his native land and his people the source of his spiritual and moral power. Those who came from the West wanted our souls, our conscience. It wasn't only lands that they claimed. That is why Prince Alexander exerted every effort to defeat the enemy. The Miraculous Healing The abbot of the Vatopedi Monastery on Mount Athos Archimandrite Ephraim has reported his recovery. He had been hospitalized with the coronavirus in May and discharged from hospital only in July. The illness was severe and could cost him his life. In order to save the patient, doctors even had to resort to intubation. Archimandrite Ephraim believes that this was a test from above. I quote, The doctors were perplexed by my return to life. God wanted to give me time for repentance so that I could evaluate my life and improve. A prayer to forgotten gods. In California, school children were obligated to pray to the Aztec god of war. Allegedly, this was the way for kids to learn how to struggle with colonialism and obscurantism. This initiative aroused the indignation of the Thomas More Society, which defends traditional values. The organization has already sued the Californian authorities for including heathen prayers in the state school curriculum. 
Human rights advocates believe it to be inadmissible to force children to participate in a ritual honoring a pagan god of war, especially if their parents have religious and civil objections. An outstanding discovery. The year 2021 has become truly important for the monks of the Monastery of St. Macarius the Great in Wadi al Natrun Desert in Egypt. In the course of studying and digitizing manuscripts, Coptic monks discovered two ancient scripts written in the Coptic language. The text was a work written around 1,600 years ago. An analysis of the document was made at the Institute of Coptic Studies in Cairo, and the result was overwhelming. The manuscript proved to contain the last edification that one of the greatest Christian saints, Macarius the Great, gave during his lifetime to his disciples. A translation of this valuable Christian document is available on the website of the Moscow Patriarchate's Department for External Church Relations. This is all for now. Thank you for your attention and see you next time on the Orthodox View.